the Pittsburgh Steelers knock off the Indianapolis Colts 24 to 17 in what is a thrilling game here today at Lucas Oil Stadium, folks. And listen, this was a game of seesaw runs, momentum, all of it. You had the whole nine yards in this one. And I want to break it down in chunks. I think there's three ways we can look at this, right? There's the entire first half, which is really good stuff for the most part. Then there's the third quarter, which is really bad stuff. And then there's the fourth quarter, which is a mixed bag, but it's closer to what you saw in the first half. So let's start positively. Let's start with the first half. This was a really, really good performance by the defense. This first half performance by the defense was fantastic, to be quite honest with you. They got pressure from all angles, interior, edge, safeties, corners. Everybody was working in these blitz schemes. And they got really good play from the secondary. James Pierre playing more is something that has needed to happen for a while now. Well, now it is happening, and I think it's positive. You saw the play he made on the football. Cam Sutton looks more comfortable in the slot. It looks really good right now. I think the Steelers secondary will be better off with Pierre in the outside part in the nickel. I think that'll be better. I think the linebackers played well without Robert Spillane. I thought everyone had a good half defensively. Special teams, it got a little dicey. There were a few big returns here, near big returns in the first half, which eventually would cost the Steelers later, um, as we will certainly talk about. But let's talk about the offense. I think that's the, the story here is, man, they ran the ball really well. And this was throughout the game, I think. They ran the ball extremely well. Najee Harris looked good. Anthony McFarlane looked good. Benny Snell looked good. Kenny Pickett looked good. I think that was the big thing. Now, the first half was more mixed bag, right? He, he had the bad sack where he didn't get the hot read. He overthrew Yontay Johnson. Miss George Pickens on a would-be touchdown. So those were the negatives. But really, I thought throughout this game, he looked good. He threw with anticipation. He really, really managed the pocket a little bit and slide into pressure when it wasn't needed. He was cool, calm, collected, was going through his reads, had multiple big-time throws throughout this game. And I thought the first half was really good for him. I thought he looked very comfortable. I thought Matt Canada called a really good first half to this game. I thought he tailored it to the strengths of Kenny Pickett, which was the rhythm, the anticipation, the accuracy, especially within 10 yards. He was able to get Deontay Johnson involved. And once George Pickens caught a deep pass, everything opened up, right? And then came the third quarter. That was the big thing. The third quarter. This is what makes this game hard to evaluate because it feels like everything bad about the Steelers jumped out in essentially one fell swoop, right? Starts off with a bad kick coverage, the terrible kick coverage all night. Isaiah Rogers just diced them all game. And then he had the big return, put him right in the 20 yard line. Jonathan Taylor would do the rest from there, punch it in. It's gonna happen if that happens, right? Then they drive again, but then they jump off sides, but you get bailed out by a fumble. The special teams, though, was really bad in the third quarter and most of tonight. Matthew Wright and the kick process was good, and the punter, Presley Harvin, was also really good today, but the kick coverage, all of that, not good enough for the Steelers tonight. Now, the defense also struggled. They allowed Indianapolis to move down the field twice in this quarter, and that was a big thing, too. Because listen, the offense wasn't good either. I mean, it wasn't necessarily Kenny Pickett's fault. There were penalties. There were the run game stagnating a little bit, right? Key drops. George Pickens had an uncharacteristic drop um, in this game as well. And it felt like Kenny Pickett wasn't getting enough help from the guys around him. And that really hurt the Steelers in that third quarter, especially. And so the defense allowed the drive. Michael Pittman scores, suddenly they're down, right? 17 to 16, this team's reeling. And then the fourth quarter comes. The beginning of the fourth quarter is the most key sequence in this entire game because the Steelers don't score on this drive. It can all snowball from here. All the momentum's with Indianapolis. So you're on the road, the crowd's into it, and the rookie quarterback steps up and drives him down the field. This was Kenny Pickett's best drive yet. I think this was his best drive as an NFL quarterback. Money throws, third and nine. Kenny Pickett slides left, 
manages the pocket, throws a dime to George Pickens, 15, 16 yards down the field. This was a tight window throw, and he put it on the money. There was another great throw with pressure bearing down to him later in the drive. Way back up, Deontay Johnson, third and six right after that, hitting Pat Frymuth on the out route. I mean, there were so many high-level throws on this drive. And then to call the third and goal, he told us that he changed the third and goal play. Benny Snell gets the run, touchdown, and then the two-point conversion. How about feeling the rush, sliding out to the right, and throwing a surgical ball to George Pickett. I mean, it was great. Kenny Pickett is the single biggest takeaway from today as a positive. He was really good. This was his best game in the NFL. The stat sheet won't say it, 20 of 28, not even 200 yards, zero touchdowns, but a clean sheet turnover-wise, and he was accurate. He played with anticipation. His pocket management was fantastic. This is the best game we had seen from Kenny Pickett yet. He plays like this in the future. The Steelers can be very happy at what they have at quarterback. Now, receiver, they hurt Kenny today a little bit. The receivers did not help him out at times. It felt like Deontay Johnson dropped the ball or two. George Pickens didn't completely elevate to that level. Outside of those guys in the receiver room, not much help there either. Pat Frymuth was great though. And Benny Snell steps up in a big way, too, to really help this offense come together after Najee Harris gets hurt. So the running back contributions with Najee Harris and Jalen Warren hurt. I thought Benny Snell and Anthony McFarland stepped in in a very positive way to allow Pittsburgh's running game to continue to churn out positively. And then you just look at the defense, right? Rough third quarter, but Alex Highsmith takes over late in the game. He clearly is having a breakout season. He is a phenomenal pass rusher, phenomenal football player. Um, and TJ Watt doing what he does. Didn't get a sack today, but clearly affecting the pocket. And so this game was a mixed bag. Steelers should have won this much more comfortably. Steelers still don't look like a great team, but there is a huge positive here, and that is the rookie quarterback is going like this since the bye week. And that's the biggest thing for the Steelers moving forward. This is Steelers Post Game. I'm Nick Fairbaugh, folks. Thanks for listening.